Good evening and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Aguian and here's some of the top stories we have for you tonight. A special education student is brutally beaten on a central high school bus. We've got the exclusive shocking video that's already on the YouTube. A police initiative in Ario Diaz finds dozens of unattended minors during a school day. And the cruise ship that almost didn't dock. These stories and more up next on News Channel 8. top story tonight an extremely violent and disturbing video has surfaced on the YouTube a central high school student was beaten recently on a school bus the victim who is mentally challenged was attacked by a female student who apparently has a violent history with this victim for years news channel 8's Wes Small is with the victim's grandmother Thanks a lot, Jerome. I'm here with a concerned grandmother, um, and uh, we are going to show the video in just a few seconds. Uh, your son, um, grandson. your grandson was beaten on a bus on his way to Central, on his way on home. On his way to home, coming from school. What happened? Um, have a little girl that called Tijuana Gilbert. From the time she came here, she was living by her grandfather on the other side of my home and she going at the same school she going at the school at um, Juanita Garden and from the time she going at Juanita Garden she picking on David until she reached to the third school from Juanita Garden to Elena Christian from Elena Christian to Central High. I went to the parents four times and up to now I have not received any satisfaction from them until this incident happened at school. All right, so she uh, she beat uh, your grandson and, there? And the boss, and have another girl taking the picture, meanwhile she beating the child. Is this a special ed, special education? Um, he, he's a special ed child. And the he's other students? He's kind of um, slow. Yeah, but the other students are? All of them, they pick on him down at the school, they hit him, they even take out their, their private and pee on him till the school have to give him clothes to put on and come home here. Every Jesus Christ day, if they don't bite him, they beat him. You're telling me Central High School students Central High School, yeah. urinate, urinate on, on your child. grandson? Yes, sir. Yes, because he came home with another clothes and I asked him, what happened to your clothes? He said, two boys take out the private and pee on him. And he went to the office and they gave him clothes to put on. But they suspend. After the principal find out what happened, they suspend them. They always do their duty as teachers. And they look out for David. But when David leaves the school and on the bus, that is the time to take advantage of him. All right, what would you like the powers that be that watch this tonight to I would, do? I would like for to do something about my grandchild because I do not like the way they're treating him. And one of the time, if they do not stop, I believe my child would not, grandson would not come back here an afternoon when he leave from my home. And I need them to leave that child alone. If you're just joining us, a concerned grandmother, we got the video for you that he was assaulted on a bus. It's happening regularly. And now we find out yeah. he's even being urinated on by his classmates at Central. Unbelievable. With a concerned grandmother, I'm Wes Small. How are we living for News Channel 8? Thanks, Wes, and we want to commend that grandmother on her bravery for coming forward with that interview. Police are now investigating the case very closely, and we want to keep you posted on their progress. And in other news, the Oasis of the Sea almost didn't dock on St. Thomas earlier today, all because of a dispute involving pilot boats. I'm out here on my hill, Blackbeards, and I can see the harbor, and I see two ships coming in. One of them is the Carnival, Liberty, and another one, and we're waiting for the Oasis and the others. And what's happened, of course, is the pilots decided to go on strike today. Five cruise ships here, well, in, in, in a quick move. The Attorney General and others stepped in and it apparently got it worked out. So what they're going to do is some of the people... In the midst of all this excitement, I wanted to have the Governor comment on this incident that took place today in which people that, that drive the boats to bring the pilots to the cruise ships suddenly decided to strike. At this stage, none of us are really 
really have a handle as to why the, the, the employees took the action they did, particularly on a day like today that represents a tremendous amount of the number of ships in, the number of people that will be in our port. Um, there was a different way it could have been handled, and, and, and unfortunately they took the route that they took. However, it's been resolved, um, and it was resolved by all the agencies working together, even though uh, the commissioner is, is out of the territory at FCCA, as is the executive director. They work with those here, with the AG and others, to resolve this situation, and they spoke with the pilots and all the other employees, so we got it resolved. Thanks, Lee Carl, and the Virgin Islands Police Department are continuing their community involvement on St. Croix. But as the Virgin Islands Police Department and the media converged on Ario Diaz earlier today, we found dozens of minors just hanging around. And one would have to ask, why aren't these kids in school? News Channel 8's Wes Small has more. It's another community initiative by the VIPD. Today we're in Ario Diaz housing community, but folks, I have to tell you something. This reporter is in shock. We have been here for about one hour and we have been taunted, threatened, and teased by minors. I can't believe it. You're looking up there in that corner. I got to tell you something. Where's the truant officers? It's no wonder why our homicide rate is where it is. We're going to go to this press conference momentarily with Deputy Police Chief Howe. But what you're seeing is realistic. These kids are way over the line, 14-year-olds, not in school, laughing right in the faces of the media and the VIPD, blatantly just strutting their stuff, even four, five, six-year-old children being unattended, not being taken care of. Ario Diaz, what happened? Let's go to that press conference. Well, Public Works has been great with us. They, they, uh, they're they the ones that are supplying the heavy equipment to actually come in and clear the bush. And we've been in contact and we're continuing to work out partnership with WAPA because certainly they they seem to, they, they it's it's their uh, it's their lights mostly that we're, we're dealing with. Um, I can say that some of it is not totally in WAPA's hands, for instance. Um, if you look off to uh, in front of me now, there you'll see the lights for the, uh, the ballpark and not one of those lights is working. Not absolutely one of those is working for those basketball courts. And um, I looked at them on Saturday night and shined a flashlight into them and it appears that all the all the, the light bulbs themselves are broken. Either they've been shot out or something's been thrown up there that knocked them out. And so uh, we're gonna have to work with VI Housing Authority in order to get those back up and running. Uh, it appears there's also electrical problems with those. Some of the electrical wiring is just hanging down. and. Um, the way that lighting affects um, quality of life here is is huge. If um, if you have an area that's not well lit, it's an area for people to hang out and do illegal things. Um, you can see uh, at different parts of the community. If you were to walk through here, you'll see um, the remains of plastic bags that once contained drugs, and you'll see those in areas, unfortunately, that the lighting is poor. To include up at the playground, um, there's a courtyard in the middle of Ario Diaz that there's no light in it whatsoever when we were there on saturday night at 10 30 there was a four-year-old girl walking in that area with no with no one accompanying them um, so certainly that is a, a big concern to us um, and but we have to address these things uh, one at a time some of them are major some of them are not so major but clearing the bush is is a major thing because we know that when we have discharging of shots when we have incidents in here that is the area that people run to that's the area they use for cover because it's dark and they can hide in, in there and that's what we're we're working to resolve deputy police chief house sent for the truant officer about an hour ago so far no one has showed up but when she does show up she better bring reinforcements trust me because these minors have no respect no respect for their immediate surroundings and certainly not for anyone in an official capacity. I think one of the crew pretty much said it good. God help us all when it comes to the housing communities on St. Croix, certainly for Ario Diaz. I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. The Law Enforcement and Planning Commission has their own ideas when it comes to stopping crime in our territory. Here's Wes Small with Director Meredith Nielsen. Thanks a lot, Jerome. All right, we're here with Meredith Nielsen, and he is the Director of Law Enforcement Planning Commission. Mr. Nielsen, we're going to get right to it. Uh, you are in the process right now of addressing President Obama and um, informing him about uh, what is going on so he could set up his next strategic plan uh, financially for the budget and otherwise how we go into the new fiscal year. I have some disturbing news that I just told you off camera about 
Ariel Diaz and the minors in our territory, but you are dealing with a prevention uh, mode, and that is really good news. Tell us, um, together with these entities like SAD and other entities, what you have planned for the Virgin Islands, especially as a deterrent to crime, and thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, as you know, the Law Enforcement Planning Commission has a mandate to deal with not only the prevention component, but the eradication of drugs, support the police department, correction department. It's a, it's a comprehensive approach, and we certainly have supported the police in the past, and we will continue under the direction of the Honorable John B. Young to provide resources to the police. But the second piece to all of this is our prevention component, and we have created a model that we call Community Comprehensive Prevention Program, CCPP. And that encompassed a whole group of things in the area of prevention. Of course, the most recent is our enforcement of underage drinking law that we're very proud of. We just received a million dollars. But the comprehensive program, prevention program, is important. It encompasses whether it be DARE, PAL, SAD, and all the other prevention programs that we really support out here. We are serious about this. The governor is very serious about the prevention component, and LAPC is here to do its best. I'm, I'm very glad, and I want to stop you there because we're almost going to run out of time, but what I'd like to do, sir, is come back and get and get some more uh, information about this preventative uh, message. And one thing I could, I could piggyback on, just on Good Morning America on our station, they have a new, you've seen it, a new um, can, uh, new alcohol that is the equivalent of six beers. And a group of women who were involved in a date rape episode, you know, had to be rushed to the hospital. And it is holiday time, and we always have accidents when the kids come home from college and stuff. And you know what? You're right on. This is a preventive measure, and I applaud you, Mr. Nielsen, and your group and organization. And you are doing a very good job. And I, I see you have a very skeleton crew. You're the only one in here. So you just keep it up. Back to the letter that he is writing now to President Barack. Barack Obama, and I believe that with this man's help and his organization and a little help from the federal government, we can use that preventive measure that he used and bring the community back in our hands like it should be. Mr. Nielsen, thank you very much. Thank you. At the law, yes, we will. At the Law Enforcement Planning Commission in Gallows Bay, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes Small and Meredith Nielsen. When we come back from this break, the governor's polls are surfacing. We'll check it out.